Hello and welcome. This webinar is an introduction to the MIMO capability within Wireless Insight. My name is Tarun Chabla and I'm the technical manager here at Remcom. The agenda for today's webinar is as follows. Over the next 30 minutes, you'll be introduced to the Wireless Insight product, its features and capabilities. This will be done via a product demonstration of an indoor scenario with 60 gigahertz MIMO array antennas. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to enter them in this uh, banner that you see here. And here's a demonstration of how to enter your questions. And towards the end of the webinar, we'll be uh, picking um, some of the questions to answer. And then uh, the ones that uh, are, are more involved will be taken offline. Wireless Insight is a suite of ray tracing models developed and owned by Remcon. It is primarily used for site-specific radio propagation and analyzing wireless communication systems. Users of Wireless Insight can accurately predict EM propagation and channel characteristics in complex urban, indoor, rural, mixed path environments for transmitters and receivers with either SISO and or MIMO antennas. Within Wireless Insight MIMO, the simulation capability for detailed multipath is handled much quicker than a traditional ray tracer uh, would. The X3D, X3D ray tracer is, is at the heart of the, the wireless inside propagation model uh, capabilities. It is a 3D ray tracer which has capabilities with uh, GPU support and multi-core uh, multi systems. The path information is calculated by shooting rays from transmitter points and propagating th them through um, defined geometry uh, using the shooting and bouncing uh, ray technique. Paths are adjusted uh, using uh, the image theory based on exact path calculations, which is a proprietary REMCOM technique, to ensure that the paths hit the center of RX points with accurate angles, phases, and polarization. Then, E-fields are calculated using uh, UTD method, the uniform theory of diffraction. walk you through the project workflow and um, the demonstration itself. I'll quickly show you uh, the workflow process that our users follow and what rec Remcom recommends. Um, here's a demonstration of the pyramid building in uh, San Francisco that has uh, structures surrounding it. Uh, structures have concrete, um, brick, um, steel, uh, and glass fronts. And here the multipath uh, in this downtown area of San Francisco is shown. Uh, with receive, uh, receivers set up on the side of uh, the pyramid building. The process that we, that we took to set up this project will be shown in the demonstration today, along with, uh, with the MIMO focus. Um, from a receiver end, from a receiver perspective, we will be using an uh, imported antenna that is um, brought in from a laptop from Remcom's near-field simulator called XFDTD. So in this case, we have set up a, a laptop and an antenna, which is an inverted FL antenna. Um, and we take the far field game pattern and then bring it into Wireless Insight. <clears throat> I'll be switching over now to the Wireless Insight product. And we'll talk about the user interface and the workflow. And then we'll move into setting up the project. <clears throat> here is the Wireless Insight user interface. Up top here is the project view. The project view, the setup that's created, and along with the, the constraints for the project, the scenario, and the control of each aspect of the project can be viewed. Below here is the main window where different aspects and uh, workflows uh, can be uh, uh, controlled by the user. These windows are modular, so you can move and place and resize them as the user wishes. Beginning with um, the structure that's defined here, this is an indoor scene. Just a quick, uh, provide a quick overview of uh, what, what we're looking at here. Along with two transmitter points, one placed in front of this TV, one, the other one uh, on the ceiling here. The ceiling is, is invisible, so we can look right into the scene. Uh, along with that, we have a foam couch, a glass-faced uh, TV, and the same glass-faced TV here, but much smaller, along with a wooden conference table and a wooden stand. We have windows all around and door openings. You will see them uh, shortly. The workflow that we follow here is a 
uh, process workflow that we've quickly mentioned uh, in the slide deck. Starting from left to right, the user interface is set up with that workflow in mind. Starting with images, everything was inside works with a right-click context menu. Importing or creating new objects can be done via the right-click context menu. Images in Wireless Insight are simply overlay or underlay images uh, in JPEG or TIFF format that assist uh, the user in creating floor plans or referencing their city data to um, an actual uh, image of, of the floor. And that can be brought in from Google Earth um, or a user-generated image. In this project, we don't have any images, hence it's empty. Moving to features. The features in this project make, um, make the project um, site-specific. Uh, the nature for the site-specific nature, uh, site-specific uh, feature is the enclosed walls and the slope floor and the ceiling on this indoor project. I'm going to quickly walk you through the different aspects of what we have done here in uh, the features. Starting with what's highlighted here is the floor plan itself. This was created within Wireless Insight, and we called it Indoor Rooms. So when I select it, it's highlighted. You can right-click on it. Let me go to Edit to quickly show you what we have done here to create this floor plan. This is the floor plan editor within Wireless Insight. This is a 2D sketcher. Uh, we have created the bounds with a wall and another wall here. And these blue dots demonstrate walls and, and, um, and windows. Walls and windows can be created by uh, right-clicking, new, walls, doorways, or windows. Each aspect of the indoor scene can be assigned a specific material. By default, walls are assigned drywall, doors are assigned free space. That means the door is actually an opening. If the user wants a closed door, they would change this to wood. The windows are by default glass. Uh, if the user wanted some sort of other dielectric material, that can be changed to a user-defined material. Floors and ceilings are defaulted to concrete. We have imported uh, several objects. Everything but the floor plan in this project has been imported and placed in the scene, starting with the conference table, the couch, stand, and so on. Um, some of these have been imported via the KMZ. So if I go to right-click import, we support several different CAD formats for import. The preferred ones are Collada, KMZ, DXF, Shapefile, and STLs. This is an indoor uh, specific simulation, while well, since I can also handle outdoor simulations for propagation over large terrain or over cities, we can then import terrain uh, in the DTED or DEM format. And that uh, the source for those uh, can be from the United States Geological Survey. There's a tool that's available for free called Earth Explorer that provides terrain in the detailed format for the whole world. <clears throat> Once the scene has been defined, what makes it really um, centric for electromagnetics and analysis of electromagnetics is the electromagnetic material property. And that takes us right into the next tab. Wireless Insight provides a large list of materials within the library. I'm going to expand this window to show you. Materials that are typical construction materials to uh, the ability to define um, user inputted dielectric materials. So you can, uh, by default, we have several materials here, construction like brick, concrete, um, varying from frequencies from 1 gigahertz all the way up to 60. So if you're looking at 5G or millimeter wave type applications. We provide um, ITU-based, equation-based um, materials calculated at varying, varying frequencies. Some of the frequencies of interest for wireless communications at the moment are 28 gigahertz for, for uh, millimeter wave outdoor communication and 60 gigahertz for Y gig. Okay. We have used some of these materials in our project. To quickly show you what those look like, I'm just going to double, double click on the, pro, on the property of uh, material. This is a dielectric half space type material. For the wireless inside, the thickness is specified in the material and not in the CAD. Roughness can be handled as well. 
Um, all of this is specular reflection, so we'll get into what that means very shortly. Convectivity and permittivity. The color of the material can also be changed. Okay. Uh, once the materials have been assigned to particular features or, or decided that a particular feature is going to get a material, simply right click on that material. So I'm going to pick, um, let's pick the TV stand, for example. This is the TV stand, change material, and then we have a list of materials. In this case, we already have materials assigned. We have two types of material assigned to this one object. One's glass on the TV, and the other is the wood on the stand. So I need to pick two different materials here to update this particular feature. Okay, I'm not going to be doing that right now, but uh, that's showing the user how to update or change materials. Moving over to waveforms. Um, waveforms are um, the input frequency that's assigned to an antenna, and that antenna is then assigned to a transmitter to emit uh, EM fields or EM energy into or RF energy into the space. Um, our models, uh, particularly the, the, the 3D models, uh, we'll be talking about the X3D model in particular today, supports frequencies from 100 megahertz to 100 gigahertz. The carry frequency in this particular project is set to 60,000 megahertz or 60 gigahertz, and this space will be uh, excited by a 60 gigahertz sinusoid. Particular antennas that will get that waveform are defined here. This is going to be a little bit uh, of a more in-depth demonstration of how to create antennas or how to import antennas. Um, we offer users to the ability to create two types of antennas, one SISO and one's MIMO. Simply right-click New anywhere in the UI. So I'm going to start over here. New, Antenna. Well, since it provides a, a list of textbook antennas, that have varying parameters. Um, let's pick the half wave dipole to start with. And here we have uh, some of the default properties of parameters that can be that can be changed. The polarization can be changed. And we have this little sliver of the UI that can be clicked to view the pattern. The waveform that's assigned to this is the 6 gigahertz sinusoid because that's the only waveform we have in this project. Users can create multiple waveforms if they wish. Maximum dBi gain is set up to be to be auto. In this case, it will be 2.2. If the user needs to change that, they can input that, <clears throat> along with the polarization to be vertical or horizontal. Um, the receiver threshold frequent, uh, dBm value is set. And what that means is um, this if this antenna was assigned to a receiver, it would not receive anything lower than negative 250 dBm. If that's too low, the users can uh, increases that number to 150 or, or um, their desired value. The internal uh, transmission lo line losses uh, can be put in. In this case, it's zero. Visual and temperature can also be changed. So that's the type of antenna that the user can create. Uh, this is an idealized textbook antenna. Uh, for our project, we have used a combination of textbook antennas and uh, near-field simulated antenna. And that's exactly what we showed in the PowerPoint uh, for uh, a laptop antenna that we simulated in the near field. Simply to bring that in, I right click import, actually uh, right click new antenna. Uh, we have a list um, of uh, all the antennas available. In this case, we'll be picking user defined. Okay. And then here we have the exported antenna from XFTT. Simply uh, clicking on that will bring the antenna in. And that's exactly what we've done here in one of the antennas. <clears throat> Just as I mentioned, if you're working with um, manufacturer antennas, we provide uh, import capability for Odyssey and Planet. So Planet and Odyssey are uh, manufacturer preferred um, antenna formats. Okay. To quickly uh, walk you through the antennas that we have available in this project, some are being used and some are not. So you can populate this list with uh, several antennas. We have a combination of SISO and MIMO antennas. Uh, to demonstrate how we um, create a MIMO antenna, let me uh, right click here, new antenna. In the list we have MIMO. Clicking OK on MIMO brings up a newer UI that we just created for this particular feature. So MIMO antenna properties. Um, the available antennas list is empty. 
So we need um, to let this properties window know what I'm going to create a MIMO antenna out of. Let's pick the half wave dipole by default. Okay, I'm going to press OK and use the default properties. And now this list has a antenna, an antenna. I can use this antenna to build an array. Okay, this could have several antennas in this list. I'm going to build an array out of the half wave dipole. <clears throat> um, this antenna would be a four element antenna, which would the array layout would be a two by two. So simply I can uh, place two, er two elements in X, two in Y, and then put a spacing of a certain metric if I want it to be half a meter or half a meter or 0.1 or so on. And that can be changed into wavelengths if the user desires, depending on the input frequency. Okay. Rotation of the whole array can be done by default, but we provide control um, over each element, so element per element basis. To, to preview this, um, before I create the array, this is the array that uh, can be quickly generated from this array builder. We have been able to create massive arrays as well, uh, 16 by 16 by 16, if the user desires. Um, we've also created up to 128, 128, and 128 XYZ um, arrays. So this is an arbitrary size and um, per axis element. Once created, I'm just going to default to two by two. Preview it quickly and then populate uh, the antenna properties window with four of these elements. Okay. While well, inside provides and gives me access to per element basis, so I can right, simply right click and rotate this element if I wanted to, or position it differently than the others. To quickly show you what that looks like, let's rotate this particular element number four, 90 degree in X, and then we can see the rest of the antennas are actually in their default state at zero, 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 and this new element, or the element number four is now at 90 degrees. Okay. We can also let the user update the antenna for this particular pattern. So if you want a MIMO array with varying antennas, you can change um, the antennas if you'd like. Moving on, we have um, several antennas in this list and we will be placing them on location points. Those location points can be transmitters, receivers, or transceivers. We have many in this case. We have two transmitters, the green points. We have several receiver points um, and several receiver sets. We have, particularly in three, uh, a receiver set with 66 points on the couch. Right here, it says right here. They're invisible right now, so I can quickly visualize all of the uh, receivers by clicking on this little tab to enable the viewing of all the receiver points in the scene. We have six points on the conference table, and this, and this uh, particular receiver would get um, the inverted FL far field pattern. So what that scenario would be is as if sitting on this conference table with their laptop positioned in the, the position of uh, the antenna and communicating with either this transmitter on the ceiling, which could be a Wi-Fi at 60, and this transmitter on the stand. So the reason we're trying to simulate this would be for looking at propagation path and receive power on all of these receiver locations. So these receiver points are simply defined by right-clicking, new, transmitter set, if this is a transmitter set uh, creation. We can uh, predefined shapes can be used. Um, in this case, we have used points. So we have one point up on the ceiling and one point on the stand. I'll quickly show you how we create uh, receiver sets. I'm going to um, disable the vi visibility of the large receiver sets so it's not in the way. I can change the visibility to invisible, and now let's create a new receiver set, XY grid. So we get a 2D overview of our scene, whatever the scene might be, and we simply click once, drag, and specify uh, the, the boundary of the receiver set, and then the TXRX properties window pops up. We can name it. 
are elevated to a certain uh, terrain or such sea level, and then uh, assign an antenna to it. Once the antenna has been assigned, we can then move out to the move uh, move over to the layout properties, and in this layout properties, Wireless Insight gives the users the ability to space um, the receivers from one point to another. So if you want a really dense set of receivers over a large large area, uh, you can change the spacing to be a lower number. Or if you want it to be a much coarser set, you can change the spacing in meters. Okay. By default, we have 0.5 meters in this case. When I press OK, here is my receiver set I just created. And then it's populated here. And this receiver set has about 1,800 different locations. Okay. I'm not going to be using this, so I'm just going to delete. This pretty much creates uh, the whole scenario um, in terms of setting up the project. Um, I have my CAD, material properties, waveforms, antennas, and transmitters and receivers set created. Now to set up the simulation. The concept in setting up simulations in wireless insight is called study area. Study area is simply a boundary region with a propagation model that the user picks to simulate uh, um, and analyze the scene. To create one new study area, the UI in Wireless Insight provides op options for um, two study area boundaries, one specifying the location and size to a user-defined location or fitting to features. By default, we'll be fitting to features. Wireless Insight is actually a suite of different models, uh, about 12 in particular. We'll be focusing on a 3D model today and a GPU-enabled 3D model, which is called X3D. The number of reflections, transmissions, and diffractions can be set to auto. So we analyze the scene and then set uh, the number of tra reflections, transmissions, and diffractions to uh, site-specific or scene-specific. If not, we provide control to the user to change and vary these numbers. For this particular scene, we have set the numbers to be six reflections, a maximum of six reflections per path, a maximum of four transmissions uh, or penetrations through uh, for each path, and then maximum one diffraction per path. The CPU threads, um, so a lot of the processes in, in uh, setting up the simulation and running the simulation is on CPU. Uh, Wireless Insight provides up to 64 cores for free and one GPU for free. So users can run the simulation on one GPU simultaneously on up to 64 cores. X3D supports um, the handling of atmospheric properties, so temperature, pressure, and percent and humidity is taken into account in, uh, in an automatic uh, setup. Okay. Once the simulation has been set up, user can simply create OK or uh, pre-name this. I'm just going to call this a dummy uh, study area. <clears throat> Uh, you can users can create multiple study areas at the same time and run uh, multiple setups uh, one after the other. For this particular simulation, we have two uh, study areas simulated and have results for. The first one is the CISO, where we ran uh, antennas in the CISO uh, CISO antennas on the transmitter and CISO antennas on the receiver, and then we updated them to MIMO antennas on the on the transmitter and MIMO antennas on the receiver. Going to delete the dummy study area we created because we won't be using that. Once the study areas have been defined and created, the user simply can go into this run icon and start running the simulation by clicking new. This particular simulation took um, under one hour to run. Uh, the number of facets define, typically define uh, the runtime along with the interactions that the user setups for the study area. <clears throat> Looking at output, here's um, the output log. I'm going to walk over um, here and show you the different available outputs. Starting with SISO. For SISO in particular, we have access to propagation pads. So what that means is we can look at how the transmitter um, gets to the receiver and all the interactions it takes to get there, along with the power and the angles and direction of arrival and direction of departure, um, and then receive power. So those are the two types of, pa uh, two types of outputs we'll, we'll be looking at. Um, depending on the propagation model, we have several types of default outputs. Users can request more 
that can be done in the study area. Let's look at um, study. Let's look at um, study area called CISO and propagation paths from the TX called STAN. So it's this particular um, this particular transmitter, and then we can look at propagation paths from this transmitter to a particular receiver. Um, I'm going to look at how this transmitter connects to the receiver points on the conference table. So that's conference table Rx. I'm going to right click on that. I'm not going to view it because there could be potentially hundreds or thousands of paths. I'm just going to load or open. Let's actually view it. <clears throat> we have um, many pads in this case per receiver. Uh, we have six receivers. So I can view all the pads or only some of the pads. Um, I can just say view all pads for this particular receiver. Uh, all the pads that are being viewed here can be visualized individually or collectively. So per path information is available. The strongest uh, path for this particular receiver takes this particular chain of interactions. So starting with transmitter, two reflections, one diffraction, another two reflections, and then to the receiver. And the power for this particular path is negative 125 dBm. If I wanted more information on this, about this particular path, I can right click, go to properties. The path properties window shows more information about this particular path. The path length, power, time of arrival, direction of departure, and so on. If this receiver set had a velocity, if it was moving, it would have uh, Doppler information as well. Okay. So that's the path information for transmitter stand TX to conference table RX. I'm going to unview it so it goes away. Let's quickly look at receive power from ceiling TX to heat map UAN, which is assuming that the user with the laptop is moving all around the indoor scene and uh, is connected to this particular transmitter on the ceiling. So let's look at and view the receive power from ceiling TX to the indoor. Okay. The highest power path, the highest power receive power in this case is close to negative uh, 63 dB and the lowest is 189. I can change this range by right clicking on um, the range options and setting a manual bound. So I can restrict this down to a minimum value of 100 dB or 110 dB and a maximum of negative 60. And now we can look at um, the shading effects and the multipath effects better. Okay. Moving on, we have now the MIMO setup. The output browser is a little different from MIMO because it's, more, it's a little bit more complicated in presenting all of that information to the user. So I'm going to hide um, the study area SISO and then view the study area MIMO. <clears throat> we have the channel data analysis. We detected, detected there was a MIMO antenna in the, in the simulation. And we have um, two MIMO uh, antennas, one from the ceiling again on the stand. Let's look at receive power from the stand to the indoor. I'm going to right click. Uh, the UI is a little different. We have a MIMO output browser in this case where I can collectively look at several different outputs from TX sets to RX sets and their particular transmitter points within the set and the elements within the set. So if I wanted to look at element per element output, the available outputs are complex impulse response, direction of arrival, departure, H matrix, and receive power. Some of these can be viewed. Some of these can be only exported to um, a text file or CSV. I'm going to view um, output from stand TX to RX set heat map UAN. I'm going to view it in the project. And the only view I can um, output, the only output I can view is the receive power. I'm going to click view. And this is the receive power from the MIMO, four element MIMO transmitter to a four element um, user defined antenna 
for the laptop in the indoor scene. Okay. And again, this is a boundary range for the um, color plot from negative 60 to 110. That was user defined. I can change it again if I wanted to. We can also export H matrix from all TX points to include all RX points. I can export that to a file by simply clicking export. And then we have a, a message here saying it's been exported to the property. <clears throat> it's been exported to um, this particular folder. Since this is a lot of information to export, and we're exporting per path to actually all of the uh, receiver points, so there's about 2,000 points. So we're exporting TX.1 to 2,000 points to the RX. So that's a lot of information. So currently, Wisensa is going through the process of exporting all of that information. Okay. While this is happening, I would like to uh, show you one of the other outputs. Um, I'm going to go here and back to the PowerPoint and show you a animated uh, propagation path. This is again for SISO, not for MIMO. For propagation paths from the stand TX to the indoor receiver set throughout the throughout the scene. Okay. And we have a movie output um, capability within Wireless Insight, so if you want to export this to a MPEG file, we can do that as well. To close off, um, we are currently developing features for um, more and more millimeter wave type of simulations and applications. Uh, very soon we will be able to handle diffuse scattering um, and we'll be providing more outputs for um, the MIMO capability. So along with H matrix, we'll be looking at delay spread and certain other outputs like K factor as well. Uh, we will be addressing questions and answering them now. Um, <clears throat> One of the questions is, can we change or update the magnitude and phase of each element? We have actually answered this question uh, to the user already, um, but we currently cannot. Uh, but it is possible to make changes uh, in a post-processing step using the H matrix output. The other question is to show the video that we have shown today, uh, along with the outputs that we just created. Which propagation tool did we use? Um, this was using the propagation X3D model. Uh, this can be done using uh, full 3D as well, but the video was generated using X3D. <clears throat> Some of the other questions we've received, uh, what type of uh, CUDA cards do we support? Uh, we support uh, the more latest uh, generation of CUDA cards. Uh, so the first or second generation of CUDA cards are no longer supported. The S series, uh, which is from 2009, 2010 are no longer supported, um, but most of the latest generation cards are supported. So all they have to be is from NVIDIA and CUDA enabled. Um, do we offer training for the product? Yes, we do. Uh, we offer trainings uh, many times a year, typically on site if uh, you're a large customer. Um, we also provide general trainings for open to the public in the West Coast, East Coast, and our state college location. Um, there are some more questions coming in. Um, we will be answering those on a uh, user by user perspective. Um, how will we support 5G? So 5G is supported um, in the propagation model itself. So particularly, this is a general purpose tool. Um, frequency of support is from 100 megahertz to 100 gigahertz. Um, so a 5G standard is yet is, is currently still being defined. The frequency ranges for 5G are more from 6 gigahertz to 100. So X3D and Wireless Insight support those frequency um, inherently. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, we'll be uh, talking to uh, 
uh, more users, attendees individually. Um, there's some more involved questions here, but thank you for attending. Um, if you have uh, further questions or would like uh, support for our product, um, pricing or anything like that, uh, you can send us an email um, to support at remcom.com or sales at remcom.com. Thank you, and 